Good morning from AfricaCom 2025 here in Cape Town. I'm together with Tony Pellegrino, Managing Director at Nokia South Africa. Good morning, nice to meet you. Thank you, Akim, and thank you for coming to our booth. Thank you, thank you. Let's start with a brief overview of what you're showcasing as this year's AfricaCom and what makes it so unique for the African context. Look, Nokia has been in South Africa since 1860. We, we never left the continent and what we always strive to do is really technology that is purpose-led for the continent. And what we have seen this year with all AI a buzz everywhere, I think there haven't been a single conference or a panel I contributed that AI wasn't there. How AI will shape the network but how the network will also shape AI. Mm. So what we call network for AI and AI for network. So whatever it is on the mobile network access with the latest announcement that we have done with NVIDIA collaboration on the AI RAN, whatever it come on the automation into the network or our cloud service, or whenever it comes to the network infrastructure, which is at the heart of the digital infrastructure that needs to be built on the continent. And all that keeping in mind about sustainable and scalable and trusted uh, model. That's really what we believe is important. Because I believe on the African continent especially, we see a lot of technology being deployed. But what is important is the sustainability and the scalability in order to guarantee maximum impact, good return for the investor, but really a mindful usage of what we deploy. So AI brought kind of a disruption to the industry from a network perspective as well. So what is your take on how can we create a future proof network by not already knowing what AI will bring in the future? Look, it, it was a big topic of discussion. As we are the, the last day of Africa come today, many questions were hype, no hype. From our point of view, whatever we look at the different hype that we had in the industry, it always left the industry better than when it started. And what we see today, with, uh, especially in Africa, whatever Africa will adopt large language model, medium or small one, there's still a need of digital infrastructure to be built. So for that point of view, yes, it adds some variable and risk, how much are we building, but AI is not a question of if, but is when. And I believe the investment that can be done today, if it is done with sustainability and scalability in mind, can be maintained on the long term. And for that perspective, we need to build more infrastructure in Africa with or without AI, but AI will come and it just accelerate those deployments. So besides AI, we see cloud adoption, data center expansion and also digital services accelerating across the continent. So how is Nokia enabling the premium connectivity required to support these activities? I like that you use the term premium connectivity because for many, many years we spoke about connectivity without really defining what is. Having a 4G or 5G logo on your phone, is it enough? Sometimes not. And I believe this premium connectivity will start or still with the wireless. How do we still grow with wireless 4G, 5G to be brought in more area, in more in rural? And that's why we also have a rural solution on how to deploy more mobile networks into the rural, low density populated area, but also how to bring more fiber into the home of the mass market. Today, fiber in South Africa only address the high income segment, but we see that the mass of the population still go home and still use mobile connectivity. And that's where we also have been pioneering that in South Africa with our partner and there was an announcement with Fiber Time that we did not so long ago on how many homes they have been connecting. And then instead of looking at home connected, we prefer to understand how many people get connected. So when we go in the mass market with four to five people per household, if you connect 250,000 homes like Fiber Time is doing now, we speak about one to 102 million people that now have affordable, abundant, trusted data at home in order to really take the full benefit of the digital uh, services. And that's what is on more on the access. In terms of infrastructure, Nokia has been really for many years interconnecting data center with our optical network. Uh, the hyperscaler coming into Africa 
have a huge requirement in capacity, but resilience as well of their network. And they trust partners like Nokia to provide those solutions to interconnect with trusted uh, connectivity between those data centers. But now Nokia also moves inside the data center. It was announced already last year, a collaboration with Microsoft where their data center using our hardware. And that's also on our shore in our country here in South Africa. So it's really important to, to really make sure that from inside the data center, between the data centers, whatever it is via an access on a wireless technology or a fiber technology, that enterprise, citizen, customer, consumer get connected to a connectivity that is meaningful, allowing them to take full advantage of the digital service and also embarking on a journey of digital transformation. And that's where automation, portfolio of Nokia is also helping. So we are really touching the whole spectrum of the infrastructure. So almost end to end. Yes, I, I'm proud to say that among the European vendor and Western vendor, we are the only one that can provide this end-to-end -end approach on the, on the network, on with whatever it is with mobile network, IP, optics, fixed network, cloud and network service, and our strong footprint on the ground. Was that more kind of a natural evolution in terms of the, if you look at the technology stack? Because you see the uh, networks are evolving. Uh, new technology is coming in, so are you basically just answering, giving the answer to the demand of the market? No, we need some time to leapfrog. And that's why last week's announcement that we did with NVIDIA was very important. Because we're trying to change how network would be shaped in the future to deal with the AI. And, and actually in this announcement, in this collaboration, where NVIDIA also committed to an investment in equity of $1 billion into Nokia, we're gonna collaborate to develop the radio for AI. And, and that's really a meaningful step towards relooking at the network, how they're gonna be shaped. But what I see is that in the future is a multitude of data center, centrally, edge, far edge. It could be each mobile site, and access through wireless and fiber, and all this intelligence orchestrated by trusted company and with software that allow AI to really provide its full potential to everyone, and especially in Africa, not leaving behind. We, we missed some uh, technology waves. The fiberization and AI has a huge opportunity for the continent, especially when you have a lot of young people entering the work market and what are the options? And the digital economy, in my view, would allow to do so. So when you look at networks, so they're perceived as very heavy, a heavy legacy stack. Will, does AI, I mean, AI is disrupting anyway the market, but does it also help to rethink the way we structure networks and how we make the future proof probably less hardware, more software? Definitely, absolutely. We, we also believe that the evolution, it needs to be open. We believe in open architecture. And why open architecture is very important, because then it allows the ecosystem to work. That's why partnerships are important. I mentioned Vidya, but they are partnership with other local companies like uh, Gijima, like Reflex, or like Afrin and other, where we really try to build an ecosystem where we collaborate to find the right solution for the market that we want to address. So we provide the technology. We try to look ahead five, 10 years what is needed and we need, what do we need to lean in today in order to make this future happen. But on this way, we need partnership. And at Nokia, we believe it's essential to collaborate because it keeps each one honest. It forces to keep standard international the same and it keeps to open the interface to allow collaboration. But the beauty of that, especially when you collaborate with a local partner, we create value that stay in the country. And, and that's, that's very, important. very important, it's localization. That allow us to develop skill development program on digital skill, and that's what we do every single year. We don't only think about the technology part and how we deliver this premium connectivity, but how can we do skill development, funding, that we need to get access to for those projects, not as Nokia, but our partner, our customer. And this is where the European Union is doing a great job now with the Global Gateway, in order to make those funds accessible. There is about $150 billion that the European Union has dedicated to Africa, whatever it is for energy transition or digitalization. 
and we are supporting our customer to collaborate with those institutes, whatever they are, direct uh, financing investment or export credit agency and that part. But partnership, skill development, helping on the, on the funding, that's what we also believe is important as a circle to really accelerate this digitalization of the content. We need more digital resiliency and we need to close the digital usage gap. It will not happen by just doing the same that we did over the last 20 years. It requires something different and that's what we are passionate about. That very much resonates with what I'm hearing all around Africa. Thank you very much for this insightful conversation and um, exciting times ahead. Thank you, Akim, and looking forward to engage further. Thank you. There was Tech Africa News from Africacom 2025. You can find more on techafricanews.com.